coronavirus pandemic is putting healthcare systems around the world to the test. In the U.S., it's also revived a debate over one of the most divisive concepts in American politics. Should healthcare be free? We'll remove or eliminate every obstacle necessary to deliver our people the care that they need. In the U.S., some are worried about whether hospitals can handle the pandemic and what COVID-19 treatment might cost patients. While in places like Europe, Hong Kong, and Australia, people are worried about hospitals too, but not so much the price tag of a hospital stay, since that's generally covered by taxes. So we wanted to know, what works in a universal healthcare system and what doesn't? I guess I have a unique view and that I've experienced, I think, five different healthcare systems to date. The healthcare system doesn't exist in a silo, it exists within a culture. We are gonna lead this country into a Medicare for all single payer program. We have a chance of killing Obamacare. We almost did it, but we'll do it a different way. In some countries, universal health care is a point of national pride. Just look at the UK. When London hosted the Olympics in 2012, the opening ceremony touted the UK's athletes and its health care system. Lawson, who was Chancellor of the Exchequer some years ago, said the National Health Service was the nearest thing that Great Britain had to a religion. Dr. Jeffrey Rivette has documented the rise of the UK's National Health Service. I'm a doctor, uh, I'm in my 80s, and I've spent my entire working life in the health service or in government controlling the health service. Zero Hour in London. Chamberlain speaks. A state of war exists with Germany. So when for us the war broke out on 3rd September 1939, uh, major hospitals were evacuated to the country, temporary hospitals were established, and an emergency hospital service which was free and organized by command and control took over. From that moment, having got a command and control system under the threat of war, there was no way of going back. As European countries dealt with the demand for medical care that came from World War II, many built in some form of government-run health care. This new health service will be organized on a national scale as a public responsibility. Well, what was going on in the US is that um, President Truman put the weight of the presidency behind a plan to have universal health care, but he was unable to, to get that through Congress. That's Martin Gorski. He's a healthcare historian, and he's thought a lot about how the American healthcare system came to be. You know, there were arguments at the time about American character, American national culture, you know, the famous pioneer spirit, uh, the freedom of the individual. American culture evolved over time. And in the 60s, President Lyndon B. Johnson enacted Medicare and Medicaid. Today, the US government still funds some programs that could be considered socialized medicine. Think Medicare for the elderly and disabled, Medicaid for low-income Americans, and VA healthcare for veterans. America also has some of the best doctors and research facilities in the world. But there's no universal program that covers healthcare for everybody. Kelvin and Enrique Childress have lived all over the world, and their family has experienced a range of both public and private healthcare systems. So I, I grew up in um, Nebraska, in the middle of the country, um, in a small community. And so when we first um, met each other and then eventually got together and got married, um, her coming from a country where there is socialized benefits like socialized healthcare and stuff like that, I definitely gave her a hard time for that very, very regularly up until we'd been married for four or five years and I still was giving her a hard time. Of up it. till we moved to the UK. Like in most European countries, any UK resident can walk into a hospital and get free basic care from the NHS. Most prescriptions cost just $10 each. Kids, the elderly, and patients with conditions like cancer or some cases of diabetes don't pay anything out of pocket. If you want to pay extra for private care because you want to get to see a doctor faster or need more specialized care than the NHS can readily provide, you can do that too. 
Having that option to go private is common in most countries with universal health care. In the States, you are being provided with a product and it's being presented to you as, yeah. it's, it's more of like an experience where you're going, it's going to be a really nice waiting room. You're going to have really nice chairs and a TV on for you. Whereas it, when we go here, the weight room is nice, it's fine. There are chairs that we can sit in. There's, you know, you're not going to be sitting in the cold or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but it is a very different um, environment. Yeah. In both systems, there's a cost to the care. The biggest difference is whether it's being paid for by the country as a whole or individual patients. The budget to run the NHS in 2019 was roughly $170 billion. That money comes mostly from taxes. Coming here, it, it was a pretty big shock, you know, negotiating a salary and getting that first paycheck and going, something must be wrong here and looking and seeing, you know, 30% of the check was to taxes and all of those things. But that 30%, I mean, when we looked at it and broke it down, what we were paying for insurance back in the States, it wouldn't have been a difference really. I mean... I think it would be slightly higher. Yeah. And I think there is, there is no price on peace of mind. As a percentage of its GDP, the U.S. actually spends more on healthcare than any other developed country. It's roughly 17% in the U.S. and just 9.6% in the U.K. Researchers say that's because of higher prices. The U.S. has higher drug prices, doctor salaries, and hospital admin costs. While much of the healthcare sector in the U.S. is focused on turning a profit, in a country like the U.K., the National Health Service is seen as part of the government. All the main political parties are promising more money for England's NHS, but it's needed now. Already delays in treatment and staff shortages are at record levels. When the government dials back its spending, the healthcare system suffers cuts too. NHS providers ended 2019 with a roughly $700 million deficit. Some providers have tried to make up for that by cutting costs and hiring private contractors to run parts of the system, like specialized care or food services. There are definitely cons. So, um, for example, if you're getting something done that is non-emergent, it does take time to get in and get yeah. seen. As hospital services get cut and the population gets older, UK hospitals have become overcrowded, causing sometimes months-long wait times for non-emergency procedures. Even if America were to create its own universal healthcare system one day, it would look much different than anything that exists elsewhere today. The US already has a trillion dollar health insurance industry. There's hundreds of millions of dollars spent on healthcare lobbying every year, and the cultural attitude towards taxes is just different from other countries. So politicians in the U.S. have proposed a range of changes, from replacing the Affordable Care Act altogether to a single-payer system, or a mix of private and public options. I think that it's easy for people in, in smaller countries like the, the UK to say, well, why don't they just do something like this in the States? Um, and I think it's really easy for someone in the States to say, well, you're a really small country. Of course you can do it. And I think both people are right. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the government's attention to the healthcare system. Congress passed a bill making all COVID-19 testing free for patients. The White House plans to pay hospitals for coronavirus treatment for people without insurance. And states have been pouring resources into providing care for people during the crisis. Still, recent polls conducted before the pandemic showed many Americans just aren't sold on the idea of a fully government-run healthcare system. But coronavirus is likely to weigh heavy on the minds of American voters as they decide who will lead the country forward and what they want their healthcare system to look like.